Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Galatians. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible, so if you're using a different translation, they read it different, but the message is the same. Also keep in mind that these Daily Word, verse by verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP The Bible Perspective. That's BP The Bible Perspective. So like and share these videos and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. All right, we are in verse 6, chapter 3, and we are in verse 6. And Paul rebuked the Galatians because he said, Hey, how did you start off in your faith? How did you start off in your Christian journey? Did you start off with the works of the law? Was the message given to you done so by the works of the law or by the working of miracles? How was Jesus portrayed among you? How was Jesus portrayed among you? Now, he says, so <coughs> what was the message? What did you come to believe? Now, verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness, then understand that those who have faith are Abraham's sons. Now, the scripture saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by, by faith and told the good news ahead of time to Abraham, saying, all nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed with Abraham who had faith. Now, this is extremely important what Paul is doing here. One of the things I want to kind of throw in is when Paul refers to the mystery of the gospel, and then he also remember says that my gospel, you're going to be judged by my gospel. It is because of revelations like this. And he says the mystery of the gospel, the mysteries in which God had kept secrets since the foundation of the world. But now he's revealing through his apostles and prophets. Now, the reason why I say that is because. This information that Paul is given, this mystery that God preached ahead of time, way back to Abraham, the good news. That's the mystery because when you read the Old Testament, you don't see it. So I just want to throw that in there. The greater point here and the truth is that God had always, and this is what's being revealed, God had always intended that the Gentiles, one, would be saved. Two, God has always intended that the way of salvation, the way to be made right with him, <coughs> excuse me, is through faith. Now notice this term, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. So that's the pure statement. And to a Jewish mind, remember, you, you, you cannot in any way ever, right? A Jewish, a Jewish person would never again discredit Abraham. He is the father of the faith. He is the father of the, of the Jewish religion. He is the father of the nation, right? And so right in the Hebrew scriptures, it states that Abraham was made righteous not by obeying the law, but by his faith. That's important. Because now, as I said, where all of the conflict in Christianity has always been law, works, doing good deeds versus faith. How are we made right with God? And here he's saying that Abraham believed God's message. Now, what was that message? Verse 9 says, so then, um, I'm sorry, verse uh, 8, he says, all nations will be blessed through you. Now, this is something the Jews should have caught. Now, remember even in the book of Acts, you see the first so, 10 years or so that the Christian church didn't even believe the Gentiles could be saved. But right here, even in the Hebrew scriptures, it stated God's intent, God's purpose was through all the nation, all the people of the earth would be blessed through Abraham. Which means everyone who was of faith, okay, everyone who was of faith would be saved. Now, what is this faith about? It is believing God. It is trusting God. What is the message? 
Paul said it in verse 1, that what was portrayed, how was Jesus portrayed? Not in any type of good deeds, works, living a certain way. What my faith is in is in the fact that Jesus died for me. We'll get more on that. Verse 10 says, For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, because it is written, Everyone who does not continue doing everything written in the book of the law is cursed. Now, it is clear that no one is justified. Remember this word justified, which is a legal term. And it's the process of God making us right with himself. The question is, what was that process? Now, it is clear that no one is justified before God by the works of the law because the righteous will live by faith. Now, let's go back for a moment because, again, it's important we understand everything that he's talking about right here. Because this is the foundation. And the reason why I'm stressing this is because even in Christianity today, most of Christianity stumbles over this where they believe that there is something they must do in order to be saved. Keep that in mind. Um, so now he says, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. Now he's given some information about the law. We have to understand the law of Moses. When he talks about the law here, he's referring to the law of Moses. Now, the reason why this is important is because the law of Moses also becomes the standard of righteousness, morality, goodness, right? So all that is good can be is framed within the law. From the law, all of the other ideologies of morality spring from. In other words, why is stealing wrong? We can go right, we can trace it all the way back to the law, not back to man's reason. And that's another story, but a lot of the people today would try to say that man in his, in his reason, his intellect, would naturally grow out of um, which they blame religion on, um, but that man would naturally mature. No, that's not true. <laughs> man is sinful. You start with that. The problem here is that if you think that you're going to be made right with God by obeying the law, here is the problem. You're not understanding what the law is. So he says here, everyone who continues in doing, this is verse 10 again, everyone who does not continue doing everything written in the book of the law is cursed. So now we have to understand what the law is. So the law of Moses was given, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead for a moment. The reason why the law was, of, of, of was given, it was added because of transgression. So it did many things. It established God's righteousness. In other words, it, it established God's standard of goodness. Not according to man, which is a problem because whenever religion gets into it, we're going to excuse certain aspects of it in favor of our inner circle, our clique, our religion, our church, our organization. In other words, God's standard is one. Man's standard is Totally different. See, I could boast and tell you, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, right? I have committed adultery on my wife. I could boast for that foolishly now. What I'm saying is that, what difference does it make when it comes to the other sins that I'm guilty of, right? I mean, okay, so what? I don't drink, I don't smoke, whatever, right? My wife would tell you, you get no points for not committing adultery. You're not supposed to commit adultery. Okay. Um, but what about lust? Right? What about lust in my heart? Right? Look at a woman and go, ooh, that's a nice looking woman, right? Did I sin before God? Jesus raised the bar. Remember in Matthew chapter 5, you go, yeah. You look at a woman to lust after her. Right? See, in our mind, we, we do that. 
I'm going to pick this up in verse again. I'm going to pick it up back, continue in verse 10 again because we need to understand what the law is so that we can understand why, thank God, I'm, I'm made righteous by faith. Pick it up in verse 10 in the next video. I'll see you then.